Thanks for joining us for this podcast from Atlee Church. Atlee is a safe place for those who've given up on church or never went. Our mission is to reach seekers and equip believers to love God, love themselves, love others, and serve the world. We'd love to have you connect with us at one of our physical campuses or online for a weekend service. You can find out more about our locations and service times on our website. We hope that you will be encouraged and challenged to take the next step in your personal faith journey through the message you're about to hear. I don't look nearly often as I should. His fingerprints are everywhere. I just look down and stop and stare, open my eyes, and I swear I saw God today. Don't the lyrics of that song really do a good job of describing our lives a little bit? Think about just our everyday world, like We're busy with chores and schedules, and we just get so wrapped up in what we have going on, and we get so busy sometimes that we neglect to see that God is at work all around us. I mean, we don't take time to to look at creation the way we should. We don't take time to, you know, think or meditate on the important things of life as much as we should, and most of the time we just kind of rush past everything. But what if we were to slow down long enough to see God at work more every single day in our lives, I think we would be more like this song. I think we would see God more every single day. But it's a choice that you and I have to make. Over the past few weeks, we started a conversation with this new series we've been doing called God Is. How many of you have been here for a few weeks of this series? A few of you, good. Well, we've been kind of talking about this idea of recapturing the bigness and the greatness of who God is, slowing down during our Sunday morning services, taking a look at different landscapes, and just realizing who God is again. So we've been looking at different words, phrases, big ideas that help us express or understand God in a different way. So hopefully that's happened for you in the last few weeks. It's made you think more about who God is. Maybe it's made you reflect more about who God is in your life. Or maybe for the first time, you've gotten the opportunity to experience God in your life and see who he could and can be when you have a relationship with him. Now, as we continue today, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Trey Kreitzer. I'm the campus pastor at our Scottsdale location and one of the teaching pastors here on staff. So glad that you're here with us as we continue this conversation together today. And hopefully, during our time together, we would just be in awe of who God is. And we would get to just feel his overwhelming presence in our life again, or like I said, maybe for the first time. The word we're going to be looking at today to describe God can be said in two different ways, depending on who you are. This is the word that we're going to be looking at today. Now, it can be said as incomparable, or it can be said as incomparable. Now, I'm from Scottsville, so I'm going to say incomparable. You say it however you want to say it. But we're going to be looking at how God is incomparable to anything else today. And the definition for this is better than any other, having no equal and not suitable for comparison. What a great word to describe God, right? Because if you were to think of a way to compare God to something or someone, it'd be a really hard task, wouldn't it? Because God is bigger, better, greater than anything that we can ever wrap our earthly minds around. He's better than any other, having no equal and not suitable for comparison. Now, since we're kind of in this new environment with all these trees today, let's just do a little comparison to help us understand maybe how hard it is to compare God to things. How many of you living in Virginia the way that we do have seen a tree? 
Good, you've been outside. Awesome, a few of you have braved the wilderness. You've seen a tree. Now, you've probably seen some small trees, some big trees, some, some really different trees. Um, but there's some trees in another part of the, the states here that don't even compare to the trees that we have in Virginia. These trees are massive. They make our little trees here look like stumps compared to what they are. Most of them are found in California and they're known as the redwood or sequoia trees. And these things are massive. Take a look at some of these pictures. Kind of gives you an idea. Like you can barely see that person at the bottom, right? I mean, these things are huge. Here's some facts about them. They um, grow up to around 300 feet tall. They can be up to 30 feet wide and they can weigh up to 625 tons. That's a big tree, isn't it? Incomparable to anything else we've seen. Take a look at this next slide here. This kind of gives you a bird's eye view from the bottom to the top. These are massive trees. And then the last one here kind of gives you an up close shot. Look at the bottom of that. I mean, does any tree compare to this? It is just hard to even wrap our minds around unless we're there. But I love getting on Instagram. Anybody love Instagram? Like I love watching all these other people take it crazy adventurous trips. And I just kind of drool over it watching and looking at their pictures. But I see a lot of people go out to these places and it's just crazy to imagine these trees, what they would be like in person. They're incomparable to any other tree. Now, when we think about God, we don't really have much to compare God to, do we? I mean, we know he's big, we know he's grand, and if we try to even compare him to anything, it would just fall short. So what are the things about God that make him incomparable? Well, I'm glad that you asked, because that's what we're going to spend the next few moments discovering and looking at together as we unpack who God is, and how incomparable he is to anything else. So if you have a Bible, go ahead and jump open to the Old Testament of the Bible with me. We're going to look at a book called Jeremiah, and we're going to look at chapter 10, verses 6 through 7. If you have a Bible or a Bible app, you can open that up. And if you don't like any of those things, you can uh, take a look at the screen. We'll throw it up there for you. And this will kind of give you an idea. I love how this Old Testament prophet helps describe God. It helps us understand just how incomparable he is to anything else. And here's what the writer Jeremiah says. He said, Lord, there is no one. Everybody say no one. Just make sure you're with me. Lord, there is no one like you, for you are great and your name is full of power. He says, who would not fear you, O king of nations? That title belongs to you alone. Among all the wise people of the earth, and in all the kingdoms of the world, he repeats this phrase again, there is no one like you. There's no one. There's no one like God. And this writer gets it, and he does his best to help describe it to us. But I want to look at, through the Bible, what are the different qualities and characteristics of God that make him incomparable to anything else? So hopefully when you came in, you got one of these, it's a program. You can go ahead and pull that out. There's some fill in the blanks on the back of it. And I just want you to kind of fill in these things as we talk about them today. And hopefully maybe one of these things to kind of jump out to you as we have this conversation together. Because I want us, as we leave here today, to just once again, be in all of who God is, of his greatness, his vastness and his bigness. And to leave here going, there is nothing that compares to God. And so the first thing that we see throughout the Bible that it reiterates over and over is that the first thing that's incomparable to anything else is God's position. Number one is God's position. Writer of the New Testament book, Ephesians, this guy named Paul, and he writes to this church in Ephesus, and he does a great job of describing God's position. Listen to this. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power towards us who believe? according to the working of his mighty power, which is worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at the right hand in heavenly places, far above all principality and power and might 
and dominion. So here we get to see that God is bigger, vaster, greater, and bigger places than we can ever imagine. And every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in which is to come. And he put all things under his feet and gave him to be head over all things to the church, which is in his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. So Paul gives us this big picture of God, that God is seated in heavenly places, way beyond anything that we could ever imagine here on earth. And over him, he is not, there's nothing over him and he's over all. He's above all, in all, and over all. He rules over everything. He's above all and in control of everything. And he continues to be higher and bigger than anything we could ever try to wrap our minds around. Now, how many of you have been on an airplane? Awesome, most of you that saw some trees, good, all right. We got some adventurous people here. So if you've ever been in an airplane, you get to see this kind of bird's eye view of the land under you, done. It is a really cool kind of moment. I always love sitting in the window seat and you get to see the clouds beside you. I think that's just one of the coolest sights to see. But I remember when I was younger, and if I were to be honest, I still kind of do it today. When I sit next to the window seat and I look out the window, there, there's a part of my mind that's like, I'm going to see God in a moment. You know, like he's going to pop out of the clouds and surprise me on the airplane. Like I just have those, those thoughts sometimes that, that that's where he is. And most of us, if we're looking down from earth, we imagine him somewhere up in the clouds and, and that's where God dwells. But isn't it crazy to think that God is bigger than just our view of him? And he's way beyond the clouds that we can see here from the earth. I found this video this week that I thought did a great job of kind of portraying a little bit about God's creation, that he isn't just right up in the clouds next to the airplanes, that he's way beyond any of that. And this kind of video takes us from earth and gives us kind of a huge view into all of creation. Take a look at this. Isn't it crazy to think how big God really is, but also how small you and I really are. I love how the psalmist puts it as he writes it this way, he says, Sings to God, you kingdoms of the earth. Oh, sing praises to the Lord, to him who rides on the heavens of heaven, which were of old. Indeed, he sends out his voice, a mighty voice. Ascribe strength to God. His excellence is over Israel and his strength is in the clouds. Oh God, you are more awesome than your holy places. So think about God's position is way bigger, greater, than we can ever even try to fathom with our earthly brains. Yet he still knows you and I by name. And his position is what makes him so incomparable to anything else. Because when we see videos like that, and when we hear things like this, like, God, you're more awesome than even your places that you created. It's like we can't even wrap our minds around that. That God is so big and vast. And his places are, he's more awesome than anything that he's ever created. When we understand how big God is, it helps us know that we can't compare him to anything else. Which leads us to our next point about God. The next thing that we see is just incomparable when we read throughout scripture is God's power. The next thing that's just indescribable, it's hard to even fathom, and it's incomparable to anything else is God's power. The psalmist also writes this, and here's what he says, says, make a joyful shout to God, all the earth, sing out the honor of his name, make his praise glorious, say to God, how awesome are your works. Through the, genera through the greatness of your power, everybody say power, make sure you're with me. The greatness of your power, God, your enemies shall submit themselves to you. All the earth shall worship and sing praises to you. They shall sing praises to your name. So once again, we see this bigness, vastness, greatness of God. And it starts with his position. And then we see it's in his power. That God is more powerful than anything that we could ever try to create or understand. I mean, think about the strongest people that you know. I mean, they can lift some pretty cool stuff. They probably go to the gym way more than any of us in this room. But yet 
their power, their strength doesn't even compare to God because God created all and is in all and is over all. And so his power is hard for us to even to fathom. I remember they gave us this big word when I was in Bible college to kind of help us wrap our minds around this. And it's the word omnipotent used to describe God. And it means this, having ultimate power or able to do anything. And I think that is a perfect description of God. When we try to wrap our minds around his power, he has unlimited power and he's able to do anything. Nothing can stop him. And that makes him incomparable to anything else that we would try to compare him to. He is an omnipotent God with the ability and power to do anything. And this power is exercised effortless, effortlessly and it's unlimited. And it's so cool to know that God has that kind of power. And there's no way we can compare it to anything else. Now, I know some people say, well, doesn't every religion have an all-powerful being God? Don't other religions have a God like you're describing, an omnipotent, all-powerful God? And I would say, yes, most of them do. But there's one thing that's so awesome about the God of the Bible is that he had a certain power that is over any religious deity that's out there. And he had the power to send his son to die on a cross for you and for me. And he was raised from the dead. And when he did that, it proved to you and I that one, he was who he said he was, and two, that he could do what he said he could do. That was the power that no other religion was able to tap into or understand. The, the God of the Bible raised Jesus from the dead to prove to us the fact that he's real and that he is all powerful. The writer of Colossians says it this way. It says, for you were buried with Christ when you were baptized and with him you were raised to a new life because you trusted the mighty power. Everybody say mighty power. Make sure you're with me. The mighty power of God who raised Christ from the dead. So this mighty power was able to do what no other religious figure had ever done or claimed. It was able to raise Jesus from the dead, to forgive us of our sins. And he proved to us once again that he has all the power that can ever be demonstrated. He is all powerful. And the Bible shows us this ultimate power is above and beyond anything we can ever imagine. Now, think about this. When we started the service, we sang this song called Our God. And it, it said something like this. Our God is greater. Our God is stronger. Our God is higher than any other. And most of us, here's what we did during that song. Just read some lyrics. But if we really understood what we were singing, we would be overjoyed. We'd be overwhelmed. Because here's what we were saying. God, you are greater than anything else. God, you are higher than anything else on this earth. God, you're a healer. You're, you're just, you're beyond anything I could ever understand. And when we sing those kind of songs, it should make us overwhelmed at the God that we serve because he ultimately has power that none of us can ever understand because he is greater than anything that's out there. Our God is incomparable with his position. And he's also incomparable with his power. He has ultimate power, which means he can be trusted. Which leads us to our last point and thought together today. What makes God so incomparable? Number three is God's love. When we think about his position, we think about his power, the last piece here, which I think is the most incomparable piece to who God is, is it's God's love. God's love. This is one of those aspects of God that's just hard to compare anything else to. It's hard to wrap our minds around and it's an experience like none other. I mean, we have earthly love, right? I mean, we love our families, we love our kids. We you know, love our parents, hopefully. We love you know, our animals, all those sort of things. We, we understand love, but, but did you know God is the one who gave us love? We know what love is because God created love. God gave us love. Here's what it says in the Bible about this great love that we've been given. It's found in 1 John. It says this, anyone 
who does not love does not know God because God is love. Let's say that together. Ready? One, two, three. God is love. So we know what love is because God showed us it. It says, in this, the love of God has made manifest among us that God sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him. In this is love, not that we have first loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God abides in us and his love is perfected in us. So God is love. You and I know what love is because God gave it to us. And nothing is incomparable to experiencing God's love. No earthly love can replace that or try to manufacture it. God's love is one of those things that's beyond anything any of us could ever figure out. It's the ultimate demonstration of sacrificial love. It's unconditional. It loves, it keeps no records of wrong. It's a love like none other. None of us can even wrap our minds around it. Now for me, uh, my wife and I, we uh, had our first baby about a year ago. His name is Sawyer. And uh, as my wife was pregnant, there'd be people that would approach us. And they say, hey, you know, we see you're having a baby. That's awesome. There is no love that can ever be expressed between a parent and a child. Like, you just don't even know what's coming. And I wrote them off. I was like, yeah, right. Like, you know, we'll figure that out when we get there. Of course, I'll love him. it will be fine. You know, but, you know, I love my wife. I love my parents. I, I love other things too. But when we had our son, well, actually my wife had our son. I, had, I didn't have much to do with it, but she did a great job. So um, she had our son. And when he came out, it was just this overwhelming love that I had never experienced before. And all those crazy people that were telling me were right. They, they knew something I didn't know that I didn't have the experience of yet. But holding my son and watching him get older, man, it's one of those loves that's hard to even describe to other people. It's hard to put words to. But I remember holding my son the other night and I was putting him to bed. And I was like, man, there is no way to describe to my son how much I love him. I can do my best. I can, you know, get him fun toys and I can play with him and I can give him all the food that he wants when his mom's not around. But, but nothing shows him how much I really care for and love him because it's just something that I know and experience with him. But as I was holding him and having that feeling, here's the thought that crossed my mind. Wonder how God feels about us. Wonder how big and vast and great his love is for me. Because I'm a child of his. Ultimately, he's my heavenly father. He taught me how to love. And so the love that I have for my son, I can't imagine the love that God has for me and that he has for you and you and you and you. That's the insaneness about God's love is that it's completely indescribable and it doesn't compare to anything else that we could even wrap our minds around. But one of the great thing is, is when we experience it, we understand and know that there's no other love that can love us more than our heavenly father loves us. So there's nothing that compares to his position. There's nothing that compares to his power. But ultimately, there's nothing that compares to the love of God that he has for his children, for you and for me. And today, I don't know if we've ever thought about how incredible that love really is. I was reading this quote as we close out our time together that I thought summarized everything we were kind of been talking about and talked about today. And it said this, it says, we should be astonished at the goodness of God, stunned that he should bother to call us by name, our mouths wide open at his love. But how many of us are rarely like this? But when we understand who God is and we start having conversations about him, we should just be overwhelmed by the fact 
that we get to know God, that we can have a relationship with God and that he could call us by name and that his love should literally make us drool. Like it should be that, it just overwhelming. That's the allness, that's the greatness that we read about in scripture. And that should be the allness and the greatness that you and I live with every single day of who God is. He's incomparable to anything else. And his love for you and I, no one can fathom. And so today, I don't know where you're at with God. I don't know what your relationship's been like. I don't know if you've been a follower of Christ for a long time, or maybe this is your first time coming into church today. But what I want us to do as we close out our time together is I want us just to to have a moment of prayer together and ask God to overwhelm us again with who he is and that we would realize that he is incomparable to anything else that we can experience, know, or love. And so I just want that opportunity to pray with you today as we close out our time together. So we just close your eyes and bow your head for a moment. And as we think about what we just talked about today, just how incomparable God's love is. I know some of us have heard about God's love before, but maybe this is your first time And you say, you know what? I've never known how much God loved me. I never knew that that God sent his son to die on a cross to forgive me of my sins, everything I messed up on. And so today, if that's you and you say, you know what? I want to accept God's love into my life today. I want to make that decision. I've never made that before. I want you to pray these simple words with me and you can just say these to God just like I am. And let's just ask God to be with us and to seal that commitment that we can make to him today. And it goes something like this. Say, God, I've had moments where I've messed up. God, I don't have it all together. But God, I come before you today and I choose to believe that you died on a cross to pay for my sins. Jesus, I also choose to believe today that you are who you say you are and that you can do what you said you could do. God, I ask that you would just Forgive me for the way that I've, I've lived my life and God, just the way that I've uh, turned against you. But God, today, I just thank you for your love. I thank you for your grace and your goodness. God, it's incomprehensible to anything else. And God, today, I choose to place my faith and trust in your son, Jesus Christ. And today, while heads are bowed and eyes are still closed, if you made that decision for the first time, would you just raise your hand where you're at? Our campus pastors are looking around. They just want an opportunity to know you and pray for you too. Awesome. Awesome. See your hands. Great. And for the rest of us, I want us to pray together today. Like I said, that God would just overwhelm us with his love this week and we would take time to slow down. So let's pray together. Jesus, thank you for our time together today. God, thank you for each and every person that's here at our services. And Lord, we know that sometimes we get so busy and wrapped up in our own worlds that we forget to take time to look that you're around us. And so God, I pray today that every single campus and every single person would just be overwhelmed by your greatness this week, that we would be in all of who you are. God, we thank you for your love that just constantly, God, shows up and shows off in our lives. And God, we just ask that you continue to be with us this week and bring us back here so we can continue to learn more about you and what you have in store for us and our lives together. And it's your name we pray, amen. And everybody said? Amen. amen, amen. Can we go ahead and stand up real quick? Get a big stretch out, make sure you're still alive and well. Just want to say thanks for being here today. We're going to continue this series. I'll be back with you next week. We'll hang out together again as we look at the next word that we're going to use to describe God. But I'm going to ask two things from you. First thing is this. I want you to be in prayer for all of our students at camp this week as they go out to have a life-changing week at Watermarks. Um, Let's just be in prayer for all of our middle school and high school students and the leaders and what God has in store for them. And the second thing is, is that we would be inviting and bringing somebody back here next week with us. There are seats all around us that could be filled with somebody that needs to understand about the God we're talking about. And so Be in prayer for who God could ask you to invite next week as we um, join together and are back as we continue this God is series. So have a blessed week and we'll see you back here next week. Have a great Sunday.
We hope this message will help you continue to explore, experience, and express God's grace and truth for your life. If Atlee Church is making a difference in your life, we'd love to hear from you. If you have any questions from this message, we'd love to talk to you. Email us at stories at atleechurch.org. Check out our website for more about our community, our ministries, and how you can financially support Atlee Church to help us continue to share messages like this one. If you haven't already, make sure to subscribe. We have links on our website where you can search for us on iTunes to get this podcast every week. Thanks again and hope to see you next Sunday.